I think the only way to tell you who I am these days is to sing a song. We'll start from the beginning. Nina Simone was born in this house in North Carolina in 1933. It's now dilapidated, but the National Trust for Historic Preservation has just named it a national treasure. Now the hard work begins, starting with a $100,000 investment to make the house habitable for future artists and activists. It's another step in the reassessment of Nina Simone as she continues to gain posthumous recognition. Simone was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame this April, 15 years after her death. But her most direct legacy comes in the form of her daughter, Lisa, a singer in her own right. It's always wonderful to carry on my mother's legacy. I'm very proud to be the daughter of Nina Simone and to carry on the legacy she began on my own terms, singing my own music and sharing the joy in my heart. My mother was one of the greatest entertainers of all time. Lisa gave key interviews in What Happened Miss Simone, an Oscar-nominated documentary released in 2015 by Liz Garbus. People think that when she went out on stage, she became Nina Simone. My mother was Nina Simone 24-7. It was an unflinching character portrayal, bringing Simone to the forefront of the public consciousness as a performer and as a person. I want to shake people up so bad that when they leave a nightclub where I performed, I, I just want them to be to pieces. Simone was also an activist, using her music to respond to civil rights issues in the 1960s. She endeared herself to some of gangster rap's toughest artists. The very young uh, are taught my songs by their parents, but um, it's not the popular style in the States now. The, ra the rappers are saying the same thing that I did during the 60s. So I identify with them even though I don't like rap music. Black is the color. But not all portrayals of Simone were met with praise. The 2016 biopic Nina, starring Zoe Saldana, was a commercial and critical flop. Do you know who I am? Nina may not have been well received, but it's unlikely to be the last attempt to capture her spirit. Simone had an incredible voice, but the story of the woman behind the music is just as fascinating. And if recent portrayals of her are any indication, the world seems to have woken up to Nina Simone. Well, Nina Simone wasn't just an exquisite singer and performer, but also a doctor of humanities at Malcolm X University. And joining me now to speak more about this critically acclaimed star is Tammy Kernodle. She's a professor of musicology at Miami University in Ohio. Thank you so much for coming on our show today, Tammy. Now, Eunice Kathleen, Kathleen Wayman and Nina Simone were two different personalities, uh, but the same person. Tell me how she was as Wayman and how she was as Simone. Well, as Eunice Wayman, um, this woman was an exceptional and talented young black woman uh, whose talent in many ways obscured her race for a period in time. And that was the same for Nina Simone, the stage name and this persona that she took on. And I think in both instances, you saw both vulnerability and strength in what she was able to project to her audiences. Now, in what ways did uh, Nina Simone use her music as a political weapon throughout all her career? Well, in 1963, following the bombing of the 16th Street Baptist Church in Birmingham, Alabama, Nina Simone says that she was radicalized um, and her thinking about the civil rights movement and even her 
her identity as a black woman in America um, was redefined. And so what Nina said about at that time was really utilizing her celebrity and her music as a way of promoting the civil rights movement. She wrote in that particular year a song called Mississippi Goddamn, which is looked upon as being one of the pivotal civil rights songs of that period. Now, she did build a fearsome reputation as someone who you shouldn't mess with. Do you think that stance helped her or it hurt her? I think it was both a, a positive and a negative. It was a positive in that he was a black woman who was trying to navigate a industry that was known for exploiting black women. So I think part of her anger was a shield. It was also part of her business acumen. Um, but it also earned her a reputation for being a very difficult person. Now, what I think is very interesting when you look at that context is that um, the, that type of anger and, and the type of uh, attitude and persona that she took on was something that was celebrated amongst male musicians like Miles Davis or Charles Mingus. But it is something that becomes a stigma for Black women musicians such as herself. Well, tell me about the time where she got rejected from the Curtis Institute of Music in Philadelphia and now, and how uh, that story came full circle before she died. So um, Nina had spent, well, Eunice Wyman had spent the majority of her life training to be a black concert pianist. And uh, her aspirations were to attend a conservatory. So her family migrated to Philadelphia um, when she was a young woman, and she auditioned for the Curtis Institute. Uh, she is um, rejected, um, and that rejection uh, causes her to move into a different direction um, uh, with her career and her music. The unfortunate mm -hmm. part of the story is that Nina Simone d never realized that because of this rejection, it took her music and her life in a different trajectory that probably had much more influence than it would have on the, the classical concert stage. Yep. Well, she is a very strong and powerful woman that many, many people can look up to today. Uh, Tammy, thank you so much for joining us today to remember the great artist, singer, vocalist, Nina Simone. Thank you.